Dear Harstam, As a fan of your IOTA series, I'm really sad that you can't see how Imba, Salad Archon in Lower League TVP, and Chrono Boosting to catch up in upgrades is. I am a Platin player, so no one can expect me to build Ghost, or use them correctly and hit EMPs. My beloved tanks get crushed by Zealots, and Marines get evaporated by the Archons. Even when I'm ahead, 6 upgrades, dropping multiple bases at once, being ahead in workers at all times, I'm not able to overwhelm the Protoss and finish the game, even if he didn't use a single storm, nor was able to split up his army to deal with drops. I know I could have built Liberators for stronger siege, but I thought, I'm so far ahead that I could break him without. Even if you may see I'm sucking there, you might take a deeper look into how fast the Protoss could catch up in upgrades if he perma chronos from 0 0 to 3 3. The moment his upgrades kicked in, he could easily overwhelm my army. If Zealot Archon isn't Imba, chrono boosting upgrades is definitely. Name Amandus, Race Terran. League Platinum, and the server is Europe. All right, let's head into this game and see what uh, our good friend Amandus, who does type out Good Luck and Fun, has for us here. Kind of excited. I do have to note that I've been getting a lot of Terran replays, just in general, as a rule. Uh, I know that the audience mainly is going to be Protoss, so you'd expect the most replays to come from Protoss. I do believe that's true. But I always notice, of course, anecdotally, there's a crap ton of Terrans complaining. Now, this can be due to two reasons. One, people that whine a lot are naturally inclined to pick Terran as a race. You know, it seems to fit them well. Um, or, if you just play a lot of Terran, you become a whiny baby. It's one of the two, and I'm not quite sure which one it is. Um, if anyone wants to conduct a study on this, if you're a researcher at any uh, university or some other, some, some, some type of lab, you can contact me and maybe we can work something out. Um, why it is that Terrans tend to whine so much? Why do they feel so superior to the other guys? To the other races? It's a good question. Also a good question is uh, why the scout is so early. But I don't really mind it. I much prefer seeing people scout too early rather than seeing them scout too late. And that's exactly what Amandus is doing here. Xakari is the opponent. It's a Protoss player. Nice solid Protoss player. Who hopefully will get some type of uh, cybernetic score. Hey, good timing as well. 127, 128 for platinum. I like to see it. It gets one too many probes, but these are all details. And I know that's where the devil is, but Sakari doesn't really seem to care. Should really get a second pylon though. All right. Reaper opener, which most likely leads into either a triple CC opener or a factory follow up, but because this is Beckett Industries. This almost certainly has to be uh, a factory opener. Because triple CC on such a small map might actually uh, get some get some risk involved. So you have Reaper, Marine. Okay, I like all of that. This is a uh, this is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's going to be Well, it's a little late with the factory, but it's fine. Reaper starts moving across the map. Okay, get some barracks here. Um, it is a little bit confusing to go for a 2 or a 3 rex opener and playing Reaper Marine into Reactor. And I can explain why this is confusing as well. So whenever you open with a 3 rex or a 2 rex, one of the main factors on deciding how successful that attack is going to be is the number of units, as is the case with most attacks, right? The reactor is such an important part of getting out as many marines as you can that building a reaper and a marine pre-reactor is just really bad. We never, almost never, see someone play 3 rex with a reaper first. And the reason for that is because a reaper takes, I think it's 36 seconds, which is double the time of a marine. So a reaper ruins two entire marine cycles. If those marine cycles were done with a reactor, that could be four marines. Adding another marine before the reactor ruins another potential one marine because that could have been two reactor marines at the same time. So getting a reaper and a marine before the reactor does 
lowers the amount by five marines. Uh, and you do get a Reaper as a free bonus, but the Reaper is completely useless in the push. So technically you're just down five marines compared to a reactor first. And you're down four marines compared to a marine into reactor. This is obviously not good if your goal is to hit as hard and as fast as possible which you can. Uh, with as many barracks units as well. Uh, it just means that your push is going to be a lot weaker. The Reaper also, not just at lower level, but in general, tends to not provide too much value in these situations when it comes um, to the scouting. We see he saw two Stalkers, saw a third base timing, but no tech whatsoever. So really isn't aware of too much of, of, of what's kicking off here. As uh, Armandus also is doing some interesting cuts here in his worker production. I haven't quite seen that yet at the high level, but maybe that's a, uh, as we call it, a, a, a bottom-up trend. So this is something that gets popular with the plebs, and then the elite takes over. It is possible that in a year from now we will see Terrans make random cuts in their SCV production, but it's also possible that Amandus just forgot to build a couple of SCVs. He's still doing fine worker-wise because his opponent probably also forgot to build workers a couple of times. This is just, uh, you know, this is just what happens at the lower level, at the, the platinum level. That's completely fine. I don't mind that too much. There is some, some definitely some ideas going on here. You know, we can see that Amandus had some thoughts uh, about how to play 3 racks into eBay, that type of stuff. He's floating 350 gas at this point. So we also know that this builder isn't tight. We also can see that by the timing at which he's hitting. I mean, this type of stuff is supposed to hit at the 450, 455. Um, with a similar army, he's hitting about well three minutes too uh, sorry thirty seconds too late um, with this army. Still should be capable of taking out this barracks or sorry, this barracks should be capable of taking out this nexus here. Um, Stims starts trying to fight with these stocks. I like how he micro that kind of push that army away and now just goes for this nexus. Gets uh, this nexus basically for free. Some reinforcements coming here from the left side as well. And if he stims those, and if he re-stims his main army, I actually think he can make a clean escape after pushing this back. He probably can take out this immortal and then just run away. He just did a lot of damage. Look at his resources lost. 1275 against 500. This is a really bad call. There's a battery here. Okay, this was a really good trade until he started losing all of his units. He actually was up like, I think like... 800 resources or so, 700 in the resources lost, and now he's down 300. And this is something that I often see at lower levels, is where people, they don't understand when they need to piss off. Just leave. At some point, you need to go home and be happy with what you've done, you know? It's like, it's like the people that always stay till, till the end of the party. And you all know what happens at the end of the party. So you either get raided by the police or you need to help cleaning up. You need to know when to leave before helping clean up at a party. It's the same with StarCraft 2. Well, in StarCraft 2, the difference is that you are the one that gets cleaned up. But here he did fantastic damage, killed a Nexus, sniped an Immortal, killed like two Stalkers as well. If he just would have gone home, life would have been perfect. Okay, would have had a large bio army sitting at home. This resources lost would have been heavily in his favor by like five, six hundred minerals. And that initial trade would have been great. Sadly, however, that isn't quite what happened. And instead, he lost his entire army. And I, yeah, it actually ends up not being too brilliant. He's down in supply right now, which is a place you don't, you generally don't want to be. And you definitely don't want to be as a Terran against a Protoss player. Now, he still has a very large army. He's getting quick upgrades. Has double E-Base, armory almost done, five barracks. And the last thing he scouted... Okay, yeah, no. This is very good. The last thing he scouted was a lot of Stalkers. He saw an Immortal, so he knows there's a Robo. Didn't see Blink, didn't see Charge. Tanks make a lot of sense against this type of composition. More so, probably, than mines in this case. Now, I... If I recall correctly, in his form, he mentioned Charge Lot Archon as the main culprit um, of imbalance. So I'm surprised to see his opponent so far just opening up with Stalker Colossi. I actually think that Stalker Colossi, or just Colossi in general, are harder to play against than Charge Lot Archon. Because against Charge Lot Archon, you just have some extremely potent tools that you don't have as easily against the Colossi. Against the Colossi often you just need micro while against Charlot Archon mines deal really well with Charlot Archon armies. Um, they just 
destroy charge lords. And you don't have to control them whatsoever. You just burrow them, they sit there, and they do their work. This is a cool little drop. Even though nothing's happening at the same time, this drop will be capable of taking out a lot of workers. Once again, he gets a very good initial trade and then goes for the forge here. Uh, I think at this point it would be wise to have left about 10, well, 5 to 10 seconds ago. Oh, this was, this was nice. This is nice. I love that he kind of is sticking with the theme here of doing a lot of initial damage and then losing all of the units that you just did the damage with. At the same time as well, just floating a crap ton of money. If, if we once again kind of analyze this fight, we can see that um, Amanda skilled like, what was it? Maybe 15 workers, 15, 14 workers, maybe 16. I'm not sure how many killed in the early game. Let's say 15 workers for free initially. Then he decides, okay, I can now kill two forges or go home. He takes out both the forges, then tries to drop over here and kills like one more zealot. So that initial start of the fight was really good. Then once again, he stays slightly too long and rather than just preserving his units, he decides to keep fighting with them until they die. And this is something that a lot of Terran players at the lower level do. If they, if they drop, they're completely committed to that drop. They never pick up. They can't imagine not... Like, they can't imagine not letting their units die there. They die in combat. They don't get back home to heal. There's not that many medifacts here, it seems like. There's a lot of bio. Vikings helping out in this fight as well. Half the army is in the back. It's not ideal, but with the 1-1 upgrades against this largely Stalker Colossi army, and this, honestly, 50 Marauders is extremely powerful. So this gets completely cleaned up. Um, and honestly, the game at this point should be pretty much... Over. I don't think you can just push straight away. You're lacking, well, a little bit of HP. If you stim another time, you're going to lack even more HP. That's exactly what's happening here. Another stim? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Now, here I actually have a very high-level tip for Amandus. And that is that the stim lasts for 11 seconds. And um, some of you might not have noticed, but here in the left side is a timer as well. So if you click stim, you can then look at the timer and you can just count with it. You know, you go like one, two, three, four, all the way up to 11. And then you press the next stim. You don't have to press stim every three seconds. It doesn't stack. Stim does not stack. I know some people do believe that, but you can only use it once at a time. Like using drugs twice isn't going to make you twice as fast. It's just going to make you feel worse. And that's exactly what's happening with these units. They are very keen on using them drugs. Then we're also lacking some, some health care here. We don't have any uh, any medevacs. Going into Vikings instead. Kind of surprised that we're seeing this uh, on the European server. This guy's just uh, investing a lot in attacking units. Not so much in taking care of its own citizens. So, uh, and forcing drugs into their own population. I know a country that likes to do that as well. So he has a tour. Wait, I didn't even uh, <laughs> I didn't even notice this yet. What are you doing here, Mr. Tor? I feel like he's been reading the forums or something like that. This is, this is something you often see. Is they have absolutely no clue what to do anymore in a matchup. And they go to the Battle.net forums, which is completely populated by Terrans as well. And it's like, guys, TVP is unwinnable. Um, does anyone have any advice? And then another guy that hasn't won a TVP in his entire life, or maybe doesn't even have the game installed, goes, uh, I think Tors are kind of good against uh, all of Protoss. I mean, they're tanky and they deal a lot of damage. Why wouldn't you just get them? And my man Amandus in his little notebook goes like, check Tors. That's the future. He also has vehicle plating on the Tor. I'm not quite sure why he'd get that over vehicle weapons, but I guess it is what it is. Um... Yeah, Thors are completely useless. They have no synergy with this army whatsoever. Um, the Thor against Protoss, it's like if the police would get a 20-wheel truck and use that to start chasing pedestrians, you know? Rather than just doing that in a foot chase. Like, you're not gonna catch, you're not gonna drive this string thing through alleys to catch anyone, you know? It might look cool and, like, you have some type of authority and has, you know, a big armor. That's nice, but... Super useless. This could have been uh, could have been Ghost, and Ghost here actually would have been extremely powerful. Because currently the entire army of his opponent consists of Archons, Zealots, and other gateway units, which all get uh, hard countered by the Ghost. 
in the Vikings. I really like that he started building Vikings the moment all the Colossi died. And he saw earlier already in a fight that his opponent's army just completely consists of Charlotte Archon. Archon, Charlotte Archon Immortal. Stims forward. Snipes an, a Templar. Okay, now should start running away. He sees this army is way too large. There's two Marauders walking across the map. There is a five unit drop in the main base at the same time. Oh, look at this Thor putting in the work, huh? Oh man, that was a great investment. Zero kills on that Thor. These guys get a bit of a trade. Once again, very low. Why is this army so low the entire time? Does it, he doesn't have enough medevacs. Still has two medevacs over here. There's some army here, some army here. Just... What was this snipe? What did he just try to snipe? Did he just try to snipe a zealot? Yeah, absolutely insane fight. Look at this. You want to snipe an immortal? I mean... This guy has like a thing called the barrier as well. The immortal is probably the worst unit to try and snipe. If there's a massive army defending it. That was a very wild play. Now, there's still a lot of army. Well, actually, there's almost no army. Well, there's like 20 supply that wasn't in the fight. Then you have these two medifacts that weren't in the fight. These bad boys weren't in the fight. This is dropping. So, actually, the army supply here for Amandas wasn't that large. And although he's up four upgrades, if your army is just half the size of your opponent, and they also have units that kind of counter yours, usually you're still going to end up losing. That's just a fact. I'm also pretty disappointed. Oh, my God. This is not going to be a good fight for the Protoss, is it? No. This absolutely is not going to be a good fight for us. Look at this. This is what upgrades can do. This is six upgrades ahead. Look at that. Absolutely disappeared. If Amandus is spending, would spend any of his money right here, he would absolutely destroy this. Like this drop also did so much. This guy has 10 kills. 10 kills. 10 kills on a Marauder, 7 on a Marine. Like they are owning right now. They're absolutely owning. Fort base down. Ghost would be really a great choice to go for, okay? I I understand that Ghost... Well, actually, they're not even that difficult to use. If you research the Enhanced Shockwave on the Ghost, you can literally click anywhere on the screen and you're going to hit it. You will hit your EMP. It's impossible to miss because the radius is like half the screen, honestly. If you get two Ghosts, you can cover the entire screen. You get four, you can cover the entire screen twice. You get six, well, you get the, you get the gist of it. Ghost actually hard counter the Archon, okay? The Archon is a unit that consists of 350 shields and 10 real HP. 10! There's like an SCV could walk up to him and knock him out, okay? That is that is the type of HP we're talking about. If you get Ghost against this unit, this is a 300 gas unit. Imagine investing 300 gas in a unit and it just disappearing because there's a guy with a sniper rifle throwing a, an electromagnetic pulse at your face. Like... Honestly, the Ghost is the ultimate counter. And I don't understand why all these low-level Terrans think it's so difficult to use. They all complain about Storm. But yet, they're incapable of using a Ghost. How does that... I don't understand the, the logic there. But maybe I'm the one that's missing something. I also like that he has a huge army. 2k in the bank. And he's up for upgrades. And doesn't decide to fight whatsoever. Um, that's obviously also a mistake. You really should add more medevacs as well. Look at this. Still, he, well, he, he really only has three medevacs that are currently active. And there's a huge bioforce. Huge, huge bioforce. Also, I want to actually touch upon the upgrades. So, we've... We've so far really just talked about the Charlotte Archon. Which was the, the main thing that Amandus was talking about initially. And he kind of threw the upgrades in there as a what if, you know. That, that is like the... The, the people that, that are still trying to deny something and then go like, even if it was true that I, uh, you know, that I that I pushed your little uh, doll from the building and destroyed it, it probably, you know, I probably had a good reason for it. That's that's the type of thing that he said in the IOTIS form, basically. He was like, you know, ev even, even if the Charlotte Argon isn't in my... Even if there are good counters in the mine and the ghost and I just didn't use them or I didn't control my army the entire game and I didn't, you know, I overstimmed my army every single time because I didn't have any medevacs and I like pressing the T button very much. Even if that is the case, then we still have the upgrades. Now, let's get into the upgrades. Is it actually true? 
With the Protoss upgrades, there is a funny thing that Terrans always seem to forget when they make these weird comparisons, and that is that Protoss actually has three upgrades. Not only do they have the armor and the attack, they also require shield upgrades to completely, you know, fulfill their, their upgrade thing. Their units, all of them have like freaking half or like a, a decent size, a decent chunk of shield and then a decent chunk of HP as well. The Star Wars 80-80, this has like 50 shields. Now, of course, Terrans usually forget about this because majority of them understand that if you use a ghost, the shield upgrades are completely useless. But this is still something you need. And uh, there's another thing here is that if Chrono Boost isn't being used, even just going up to 3-3 takes longer for the Protoss than it takes for the Terran. Only with permanent Chrono Boost usage, or I think if you use 8 or 9 Chrono Boost, you're going to be faster than the Terran. Um... No, sorry, if you use like five Chrono Boost, maybe you're going to be faster than the Terran. Um, but if that's not the case, then the Terran actually has faster upgrades. So we need to spend a lot of energy into this as Protoss. We have more upgrades. And even if we perma Chrono, if we want to get the shield upgrades, the attack upgrades and the armor upgrades, it is still taking longer than what the, the Terran counterpart does. So that claim is just absolutely false. It makes no sense. You can get individual upgrades faster, but getting to a completely upgraded Protoss army is just slower. These are facts. You can, you can do the math yourself. You can do your own research here, Amandus, and you would have figured it out, okay? You absolutely would have figured that out. You're a smart fella. Well, you're a person with a brain. I think. Oh. I want to see that one again. So there's a scan here. He sees that there's Archons. Okay. I wonder if he thinks that these Archons are just standing solo. He moves forward. Let's take a look at his vision. He sees the Zealots right now in his vision. Probably knowing that there's more. Like at least he should realize that these guys never come alone, you know. And he decides... To right click the pylon here. And he also, as he got charged on, he doubled down by moving even further into this. He just walked into the biggest surround I've seen in my entire life. Yeah. No crap you're gonna lose a fight if this happens. Honestly, he could have been up six upgrades at this point. If you take a fight like this, you're still going to lose. Like, there's absolutely no way that you're supposed to win a fight like that. It's just not possible. At the same time, by the way, 2-2 has finished at this point for Sakari. I still believe that at, if at any point Amandus decides to build five ghosts with Enhanced Shockwave, he's going to absolutely destroy this army. This is what? Seven Archons. You throw three... You blanket like four or five EMPs on this. This army is complete crap. Like, it has... He has nothing. You could also micro against it. You could get mines against it. I do like this drop. No, you could... Why are we always microing into a surround? What? He actually doesn't want his units to come home. He just keeps... Is he? This guy read the art of war. I was like, ha. Huh, if your units believe they have no way out, they will fight harder. That doesn't work in StarCraft 2. They have a set amount of damage. Like... No, if the marine is, is is dying over here or is running away, they'll still have the same damage per second as they usually have. Like, it doesn't matter. The art of war doesn't apply here, my friend. Okay, so this base gets taken out. Kind of to be expected if you build a base so close to your opponent's base. Um, I still believe at any point if the... How does he do these fights? I just don't understand it. I want to see this one again. Look at this. So, he has this huge army. He just saw the army as well, okay? It's not like he's not aware. He just literally saw his base die. 12 SCVs went down. He decides to go. And he has two medevacs that are going back home for whatever reason. He stims forward. Goes into the bushes. He's like, hey, I have no... Like, he knows! He sees with the sensor tower that there's units behind this. This can't even be a surprise. He walks in. He scans walks out 
and uses the second stim at the same time while sending the medevacs into their death. I honestly couldn't have made a worse scenario for him if I would have tried. Like, he did everything wrong there. That's like 10 out of 10 on the idiot skill. Like, congratulations. You messed it all up. Another stim. He just keeps stimming. Like, the, the opponent doesn't even need to use disruptors or AoE. This guy's just killing his own units. Like, consistently. He, he second stim. That was two seconds. He just stimmed twice in two seconds. This is the most stim happy ter I don't think a single disruptor shot has hit any of the opponent's units, by the way. That is something as well, huh? That really is something. And I can understand why that is frustrating for Terran. See the other guy con consistently hitting his own units with the disruptor. But if you think ghosts are difficult to use, my friend, you should you should hear about the disruptor. Because this ball needs manual control. You can't you can't even just click it once. Well you can, but it's basically like a bad EMP in that case. It's actually ridiculous. I can't believe how hard Amandus got owned in this game after being so far up. Just because he's... He's literally just been building Marine Marauder. Usually there's Medivacs, but he didn't even build a Medivac. Just legit Marine Marauder. He stopped building tanks as well. I would... Honestly, tanks weren't great, but I still would have preferred having some type of factory units over having nothing. Mines would have been pretty useful against uh, at least the Charge Lot Archon as... I doubt Sakari would have been capable of hitting a mine with any of these disruptors. Ghost Academy could have been very, gr very, very powerful as well. A, a good call, perhaps, if your opponent's army consists entirely of gateway units and like nine Archons. Ten Archons! And this is uh, this is another Terran here on a little bit of Copium, you know? This He doesn't quite understand that the game is over. You, you always gotta... Kind of think back, put this in perspective. Amandus at one point was up 30 supply and 6 upgrades. And he didn't manage to win the game at this point. Right now he's down 110 supply and even upgrades. And now all of a sudden he still believes. Like, if you didn't... Like, it, we saw what happened before with that lead. He couldn't kill anyone. And now he, for whatever reasons, without... Me he's getting two ghosts. I thought they were having leave the barracks. Like, he'll be dead before they leave the barracks. Do you show? I get disruptor shot to end with as well. Do we get to see one leave or no? Will they see the light of day? Damn, should have built Ghost earlier. Yeah. Yeah, you should have. How is it possible that you make the complete correct analysis already at the end of this game and then... After your moment of brilliance at the end of the game, you decide to write up this, this entire post complaining about Zealot Archon, which is literally countered by the ghost. I don't understand that. But, alright, let's, let's think about this game a little bit, okay? When it, when, it came, when it came to the macro, I think your macro was was decent. You floated a fair amount at times, but your setup was was absolutely fine. I mean, you had your, your five barracks, double eBay type of stuff. I, I really did like that. I think it was good. And um, you're like details went wrong. Every single, the, all the details were wrong. Okay, um, the devil is in the details, and I have some good news for you. You will never meet the devil because you don't know anything about details. The entire early game is kind of weird, and then you know the second eBay too early. Your starport was late. All that type of stuff. It it doesn't matter too much. You just. It's fine. I was okay with your macro for your level. It was good. Good enough. Good enough. You know, you should be capable of winning games with this. If you can get up six upgrades and like 20, 30 supply. It should be no problem. Then you mentioned in your form, what was it that you said? Dropping multiple bases at once. This didn't happen. Like, this is actually just a flat out lie. You dropped the main base multiple times. One time, two marauders didn't enter your two medevacs. And they, they walked into the natural. That is not dropping multiple bases at the same time. That is accidentally multitasking. Don't make that bigger than it is. Like, the reason why he said this is because he saw, like, multiple red things on the mini maps. Like, oh, I'm dropping multiple bases. Nah. It's not what happened. You know it. I know it. Everyone knows it. So, for the multitasking, honestly, you're going to get a... Uh, eh, because whenever you multitask, you did start floating a fair amount. And the control also wasn't that good. It wasn't... Yeah, you just stimmed. You stimmed a lot. You stimmed a lot. Then we get to the two points where I think you really lost the game. 
One being the army composition. You never added any mines. You never added ghosts. You didn't add uh, liberators either. Um, you also got vehicle plating. That's separate. But please don't do that again. Either get ship weapons or vehicle weapons if you really want a lot of tanks. Um, but otherwise just get ship weapons and get liberators out eventually. Don't, don't get plating. Your army comp really did suck. You need ghosts. You need mines. Uh, these units kind of micro themselves. You need way more medevacs in your army. You don't need to build more Vikings if your opponent isn't building Colossi anymore. Having two, uh, three, four Vikings around, maybe, like, kind of as a general rule, might not be bad if they ever switch back into Colossi. But um, starting to build Vikings after you kill all the Colossi and seeing that your opponent has Archon Zealot just doesn't make any sense. The complete lack of Ghost obviously is terrible. Complete lack of Mines doesn't help you either. So for that, it's a... Uh, eh. Then the final thing is honestly the micro. It was painful to watch at times. It was uh, basically torture. If, if, if the CIA ever sees this game and they start showing this type of footage to the people they detain, they'll start talking real fast because it was awful to watch. Just walking into surrounds, stimming three, four times in, in, in mere seconds. Like, I don't even understand quite how this is possible. Um, I honestly wouldn't mind if you would unbind the Stim hotkey. I understand that Stim has a lot of advantages, and mainly the, the damage output, but you use it so much that overall it might just be better to not use it at all, just use slow marines and marauders. I, yeah, I've, I've never seen something like this. It, it really was quite bad. Also, stop trying to do for go for fancy snipes on Immortals. I'm not quite sure what that was. Just kite back, burrow mines, and use EMP. It really isn't that hard terrain, players. It really isn't. No matter how much you believe that your race is so micro-heavy. So for that, you also get a, a big uh, thumbs down. Put that all together. And you, my friend, do suck. And you suck real hard. All right. That's going to be it for today's episode of Is It Imba or Do I Suck? Where we deliver another suck stamp to our good friend Armandus. Uh, if you did enjoy, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Um, yeah, bye-bye.